and one and we are now on live on Facebook and recording. This is SSB Unfiltered brought to you by the Stop Holding Back Foundation episode number Chris? 22. 22 which means we have been recording podcasting live on Facebook every day for 22 consecutive days which brings us here this is the third weekend of lockdown as London is still quarantined to protect us from the coronavirus that is actually pretty serious. However, we have found our way of engaging with our audience in an interactive web-based way more frequently now, so every day. And it has been an interesting journey, Chris. Very, very interesting. And we have learned a lot about uh, each other and uh, met quite a few people along the way. I've got to ask you, Chris, how has the day been so far? It's been okay so far. I'm beginning to feel a bit tired now, though, after this morning, which I really enjoyed, by the way. It was really cool. This morning, we had our first Q&A since the quarantine, since the lockdown opportunity for people to ask us questions and it was really good we had some really good questions so essentially this was a kind of like an informal q a session uh privately held and it was it, it was in a strange way like podcast but we weren't kind of hosting or like talking about a certain topic there was open forum open floor you have any questions we'll answer we'll share and we'll um kind of like spread our love and um we kicked off at 8 a.m london time and uh i'm an early riser so i did not mind at all i think chris was struggling slightly when i gave you a phone call in the morning just yeah. to check if you're awake dude yeah but only since the lockdown my sleeping pattern's all off been going to bed really late waking up really early like last night maybe went to bed at three in the morning um i was messing around on the computer a little bit but i, I just wasn't tired my sleeping patterns all off so to get up today at 7 30 when i went to bed at three was a little bit of a struggle but i was up and i was ready and i enjoyed it so it's cool thank you chris i was happy to hear that you did enjoy it. We were, I think we were on for about an hour, 45 minutes to two hours. And it was a really good discussion. We learned a lot from the forum, from the questions that we got from, from a number of people. And uh, it's always good to start the day off with kind of like deep and meaningful conversations in DMCs. Was you expecting it yeah. to last as long as it did? Was you expecting it to last an hour and 45? Because I had no I idea. I thought it would be like maybe 45 minutes to an hour maximum, but it just kept going and going, which was cool. It was nice, but I didn't expect it to last that long. So it's a really good thing they did. Yeah, I think um, maybe at the start you do think that question will dry up, but people want to want to ask us stuff and it's just a consequence of the questions and problems maybe currently that people are having as they aren't kind of speaking to many people having a chance to go outside and and in kind of I'd probably imagine people are regressing slightly even people who don't start to as well because you aren't interacting with people you lose a bit of that kind of social communication noose it will be really interesting to see how people interact with each other after this um, lockdown is lifted. I'm really fascinated to find out. But to be honest, if anyone's got itchy throat or just a one little sniffle, I'm walking the other way, bro. I'm walking the other way. I don't care if you're my mum. I'm walking the other way. What I found though is, and I don't know if this will carry on after the lockdown, but rather than ringing people i'm like i'll zoom you or i'll facetime you even though it could that whatever that conversation is 
could be perfectly fine over a usual phone call. But I just prefer to do a video video call now. But maybe that's perhaps because I'm not seeing that person for a long time. So I just want to see everyone's faces. But it's weird that I'm more I'm more uh, willing to do a lot more video calls now. I think I will carry on afterwards because something I was talking to Aranda about earlier is kind of at first she wouldn't really video call people and even if she did it would be a bit like oh hi what do I do what do I say but now it's kind of like very natural to jump on house party if you didn't get fooled by the hoax or jump on whatsapp or any other VC app and just like pick up pick pick it up and chat because um it does help when you can see a different face every now and then because you're stuck in a house with people you've been seeing every day or, or even worse if you live by yourself it's nice to be able to see a different face and actually interact because as uh, social creatures we need society we need community to actually survive it's inbuilt in our minds and um and it's important for our mental health that we actually have that feeling of community, which is why I think the webinar this morning worked really well because we offered that to a number of people and uh, they could feel the love. They really opened up and they were really honest and really honest. Yeah, really honest. Really honest. <laughs> so um, but that, we'll save that for another podcast. Um, I just thought I would change it up slightly. So before we get into it, the actual main thing for today, um, I wanted to start something that we could maybe incorporate, which is what's the, the most random, randomest video you've seen today on YouTube or Instagram, this PC, and um, like kind of talk me through it and uh, just what you found enjoyable about it and if you learn anything if anything oh, that's, that's a difficult one but yeah. it's going to be a video that i have seen today because i haven't been on my phone much today i'm trying to think of one yesterday that i saw um there's a lot of tiktoks going around which have been interesting um I can kick off if you're thinking. Quickly. One, no, there's one that comes to mind. There's a TikTok going around where um, a girl is walking in on their boyfriend playing PlayStation completely naked. I don't know, and they're trying to get the reaction off of the boyfriend to see if they can distract them from the PlayStation because obviously during. <laughs> quarantine everyone is on their playstations constantly so that's uh it was actually quite funny they, i think i may have seen that one i think that's there's some kind of different challenge going on i got, I got tagged in something today from from a friend of mine that i used to train thai boxing with he's pretty lazy i was about to say something else and um and he's doing some like five 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 challenge where you do 5k run uh you donate five pounds and then tag five people to do it and i just wonder back saying you did not run 5k what? <laughs> seriously it's, 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 this guy's a blagger he's a waffler but um yeah so i'm gonna do my 5k chris you're probably gonna, gonna get tagged as well what okay yeah so it's something like you, you you do 5k run you donate five pounds and then you nominate five people. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, essentially it. Um, random video I saw today was it's proper random, but it's um, a Gordon Ramsay video. So he used to play for Rangers youth team football. I didn't know that. I didn't know it either. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he did it. So he did like a trip down memory lane video where. Because he used to play with Ali McCoist as well. So he met with Ali McCoist and then they did some training. They went in the ice bath together. 
and, and did the recovery. And then they went into the canteen and then Gordon Ramsay cooked the food for like the youth team and stuff and made it all nice but healthy and, and that kind of thing. So um, that was my random video for today. Oh. So yeah, now we've got through all of that, we can talk about the real stuff. So, um, yeah. so yeah, like I mentioned earlier on, this morning we ran through, well not run through, but, but we ran free SHB webinar. And today's format was really good because the handful of people on, so we allowed for Q and A and more of a dialogue. I would assume as this grows, we'll probably have to um, turn off audio and just have one way chat, but allow questions via the text chat function in Zoom. Um, but today was really, really good. We uh, had a really good time, learned a lot from a few people. I particularly enjoyed kind of some of our guests opening up about their experiences with speech in maybe the past two or three years. Um, I also, I know like it was quite a throwback because um, one, one, of the per, one, one of the people, one of the people who did join, I have, um, I think I met him probably about three, four years ago and I haven't spoken to him in some time. So it was actually nice to reconnect with that person and actually see how far you've come. Because as you know, when you're working on your speech and doing all these things and kind of achieving quite a bit, you go through all these gears. But sometimes you think, oh my God, like I've come through this after two or three years and this is what I've done. And when you see that person, it kind of puts things in perspective. Because when you all kind of go forward together, it's hard to see your starting point. But when you see people from before, I know it's hard to explain. It's a bit like when you bump into someone from like primary school or, or from high school in the street. Then you think, what have I done in the last 12 years or 10 years? Or, and then you think, okay, so I've done quite a bit. But you don't really, but you don't really remember like all those days or periods when things were bad or boring maybe, but you remember the highlights. And it was actually nice to connect with that person again, just to see this is where I was at this point. And I've come to uh, this stage now. And of course, there's a lot more to come. Um, how did you find it, Chris? How was your uh, morning after you woke yourself up? Yeah, it was crazy. And I understand what you mean, because when you speak to people after so long, you think, wow, the last time we spoke, I hadn't achieved this, I hadn't done that. And then, and then you realize, wow, look how far I've actually come. And yeah, I, I had a similar experience to that today as well. It was good. A lot of the questions today were interesting. A lot of them, it... I they were really interesting. Really yeah, but I wouldn't go as far, I wouldn't go as far to say that they upset me that they were being asked but it did I was taken back a little bit by some of the questions and why these same questions are still being asked after people have been working or trying to improve their speech for so long and and it, it was interesting it was interesting I think I I do understand what you're saying and um, I thought kind of we'd put these types of topics behind us, uh, especially, especially with these people, right? But um, yeah, things just that's, keep, that's yeah, that's the way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, for some reason, things keep coming back to us because people just find us a bit more um, approachable, maybe easier to be honest with. Yeah. Apologies for being vague, but um it is always um i guess awkward conversations when people from other programs or courses are kind of opening up more to us than their own coaches and um 
I guess that's kind of, I, I guess that can only be promising because for us, it means that we are kind of like become, we're not becoming or like being a bit more authentic to the two, to these people. People feel more comfortable to actually um, speak to us. We relate with them a lot more. But at the same time, it is worrying, like really worrying because didn't, I think you mentioned something afterwards when we had our debrief where where you said that in a strange way like um some you can't say everyone but some of them are conditioned after going on certain programs to to i think the word used was traumatized but, but it does sound extreme but it's more you start start to start to actually feel a lot more negatively towards your stutter than you would and that normally happens to people during childhood, but you know, some people now actually kind of find it like um, find it really awkward or when they do have blocks in front of certain people from their like from their coaching network, they actually feel that there's a tension against kind of blocks and and they are unable to open up properly. But with us, Yes, they're having blocks and, and freezing or struggling with their speech, but they're actually able to actually work through some of their, their problems. But the thing is, we, we can't help everyone because our interactions with them are purely through these free groups, etc. We always do encourage them to speak to their coaches and try to open up with them. Because in the end, if you're part of a group or part of a program, you have to be able to, to actually use that service. and and open up to your coaches, build a relationship with them. Especially if you've been part of it for like, in some cases, four or five years. And if you aren't able to actually use the support, then you've got an issue there, right? Yeah, 100% for sure. It's crazy that we're having to raise a point like that. It's crazy that we're having to raise a point that people have experienced an uncomfortable reaction or reaction that they didn't expect and a reaction that they didn't want when they've blocked on another stuttering improvement program or with certain people that are also stutterers who are working on their speech. It's actually crazy. And the reason why it's very difficult to accept that is because as a child, you might start your stuttering pattern of behavior. It gets pointed out to you by, it could be a parent. It could be a sibling. It could be an uncle or your grandma or whoever it is or someone at school. But because they've pointed it out to you, that's, that usually traumatizes the kid and makes them think about it more. So if you're now an adult and you're working on your speech and you're doing all you can, to try to improve your speech. And when you have a block, which usually in my eyes means if you are having a block, you're pushing yourself, you're beginning to experiment, you're working on it, you're trying to make improvements. If you wasn't, then it just means you're staying in your comfort zone and you're staying in a safe environment. Um, so for that person to get a negative reaction to a block on a course where they're working to improve their stutter, it's, it's crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. It's crazy. It is crazy. Because cause of all the places you'd ex expect to that to be your safe environment. To, I guess, you know, like if the speed comes out the way it is, like up, down, aggressive blocks, light blocks, fluent, disfluent, it should be irrelevant in that environment. And then you can actually work through it with those people, work through it with your coaches, with your support group, with, with your support system. And dude, you're paying, you're paying for this as well. You're paying to be judged. What do you think causes that though? What do you think leads to people feeling that they can react like that to other people? Uh, you're asking for an opinion or my assumptions or... Either. Whatever you think what do you, I mean, how, how do you get to that point? 
Um, because everyone that's reacting in that way has been in that person's shoes. That's why you're there. It's a really weird one, but if your group is built on kind of more of a like, um, there, there is a, um, a style of teaching. So it's called command style, command style teaching, where purely one way from, an, from a trainer, from an instructor, do these techniques and your speech will get better. Follow these directions, your speech will get better. And so it's called command style teaching. So um, if, you, if you, for some reason, work in kind of schools or go into football coaching, and there's different styles of teaching and different styles of learning. So different kids, they kind of um, learn in different ways. So there's command style where so some kids, they need to be told what to do, then they'll get on with it. Um, like for me, for example, I learn more from trial and error. So someone can actually explain what to do and it will, it will make a bit of sense. But for me to actually understand it, I've got to try it, make a few mistakes and then work it out. And then it sticks. Some people learn from guided discovery. So like um, a teacher would ask leading questions and slowly take that person towards the solution. So there's different types of l learning and some encourage like discussion and collaboration. Obviously there's pros and cons with all of them because if you did guided discovery with a group of a hundred people, it's not going to work, is it? You're going to be there for months, but if you've only got a set amount of time, then it works. Now because of that, it becomes a lot more like, this is what you do. This is what's on the can. We don't have time for you to question anything. So just follow what we do. And if that carries on eventually, this trickles down the, the like systems. So the next trainer, the next trainer, the next trainer to a point where no one knows like why you're doing something. And because you don't know, you, you, you want to shut down that question. <laughs> Because you actually don't have the answer. And I don't think some, some people have the answer. And it's easier to actually shut down the question uh, um, in front of the group because you don't want to kind of have like rogue splinters or people questioning why it doesn't work because the whole thing, the whole premise is based on believing it works. And it's kind of... Um, it works in certain environments. Like it, it could work when they're amongst each other uh, within a safe environment, within a course environment, but it promotes fear. That's the problem. Okay. The bit of a ramble, a bit, bit of a ramble, but like um, uh, essentially, um, when this is the message from the top and trickles down then you aren't kind of in a position to actually like change or question things because it's kind of streamlined from the top of an organization if yeah, Ruben answer me this when someone has a stutter they usually stutter more because they're scared to stutter yeah now if someone's a part of an organization or a program and they're scared to stutter, how do you expect that person to make progress? Um, good, good question. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand what, what I'm trying to get at? Because yeah, of course, of course. For, for someone to raise that point this morning, I was just sitting there thinking, wow, is that how, is that how you genu genuinely feel? Yeah, it's, it's pretty sad, pretty sad. But um, you can't really do anything about it because it's up to that person to take action. And I'm not saying they have to like 
jump ship or find a new code. Just kind of like it's, it's your responsibility to take response. It's your responsibility to take action on on your speech. You can't rely on on too 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 much coaching, too much coaching, too many courses. At some point, you draw the line and say, "Look, I have everything I need." I I need to start applying, applying, applying repeatedly, consistently, and then I'll make progress. And if things don't work, you've got to find a community that maybe encourages that discussion. Because if you get clamped out or clamp clamp, if you get clamped down, whenever you try to actually open up about these points. No one's going to go anywhere because everyone can learn from these discussion points. I learned so much this morning. I learned so much. There was um, another question we had that really struck me as well. Like, um, at what point do you kind of um, think you're being overcoached? I think that was a brilliant question. Yeah, that was a great question. I, I think that was a brilliant question because that's something we need to think about. Because when do you start to overcoat someone and um what's your opinions on it I, I don't um i think i contribute towards that response what what was your take on it i believe that when you when you can't think for yourself and when you are hitting every little stumble and you feel the need to pick up the phone and ask, what do I do with this word? Or I'm struggling to say this sound. Then, and you've been on a few courses or you've been through a program and you're six, seven, eight months into it. That is a clear sign that you're being overcoached and you're not thinking for yourself there has to be a point where you know how to self-coach yourself because whatever that when you call a coach after seven or eight months they're not going to tell you something that you haven't heard before they're definitely going to be repeating themselves they would have told you that maybe four months ago or five months ago but um they they Definitely would have been overcoached. Apologies for that. Stay composed, Chris. Stay composed. No, I don't know what. Was back that. in the zone. Back in the zone. Back in the game. Yeah. Back in the zone. So you're saying, um, after eight months, you would assume that that person is aware of everything that they need. No, it could be well before that. But if if that person is still after that amount of time, still feeling the need to pick up the phone every difficult speaking situation that they have coming up, I think that's a sign of being overcoached and being too heavily reliant. So you're too reliant, not necessarily, I mean, forget the coaching part, you're, you're wanting your coach, coach to hold your hand, to hold your hands through everything. And that is not a good sign. You have to, you have to be accountable. You have to take action off your own back and implement things yourself. You don't need to be told all the time. I just want to kind of draw a bit, a bit of attention to um, the Facebook feed. So you have Leo from Finland saying his friends are, and so himself and his friends are having an Easter brunch through video chat. So that's from their International Stuttering um, Association in Finland. They are having an Easter brunch, which I think is very, very cool through Zoom. And this is probably a good time to plug that we've had an interesting weekend as well, meeting Ahmed from the Pakistan Stuttering Foundation, who has invited us to their Toastmaster meeting, which is tomorrow on Zoom. And um, I was thinking about how to actually plan, like, the rest of the day around it because that's around the time we cook and have lunch and watch power but i, I managed to actually drag aranda to join as well 
as a, as a guest. So um, kind of kill two birds with one stone there. What time is it tomorrow, Ruben? You haven't told me yet. Yeah, it's um, 7 p.m. Pakistan time. I, I think it's um, time difference is five and a half hours or five and a half hours or five hours, sorry. Yeah. All so right. um, did GMT plus one, two, three. What time is it? Is it in Pakistan now? So we're going to find out. So at the moment, it's 11.04, which means that there's a four hour gap. Apologies. It'll be 3 p.m. tomorrow. Okay. I should be on time. I'm the grammarian, so I have to uh, be there from the start. Can't mess it up. And I asked him to put you down for tabletop as well. Oh, great. Let's do it. Cool. Are you excited? Yeah, man. Yeah. I think um, it's been a really uh, interesting weekend, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. It really does not feel like Easter weekend, that's for sure. Indeed, it, it feels weird. But it feels good weird. The best part is there's still two more days of this left. Or of the weekend. <laughs> yeah. And then another few weeks in the same place, though, just in my living room working. Yeah. I want to ask you, Chris, um, what, what was your expectations for this morning? Um, and were they reached and... If anything, how would you like the next one to go? Like, um, I've, got, I've got a few thoughts and ideas, but I'll add after you give it a crack. It, um, it exceeded my expectations, to be honest. I thought we would get the usual questions. I thought we would get like, you know, what techniques do you use? This and that. Questions about charity. But the questions that we got were really outside of the box. They really wasn't what I was expecting. And I wasn't expecting as many questions. I wasn't expecting the session to last as long as it did. Um, yeah, it, it definitely exceeded my expectations. How did you think it went? I think it was good. Um, again, it was better than I thought it, it would be. I expected one more person to join who I haven't met before and I was half expecting Ar Arma to join as well from Pakistan because if they if those two people people both join it would have been really really cool because we would have had representation from Africa Asia um, Europe and UK yeah so we would have been very uh, continent cross continental um, webinar on that in that morning um, that, that was, that was the reason why I picked that time to make it easier for people in Asia to join. Um, some, some came on, but they dropped off, um, so that they couldn't savor the, uh, the full value of the webinar. Um, personally, in terms of content, I thought, yeah, like, um, questions, I expected a bit more that technical kind of advice on speaking in maybe different situations etc but it turned into more of a like psychological kind of approach and um na navigating through different issues with regards to with regards to acceptance which i would have thought is more of a beginner's topic that you kind of cracked and then you work on it over the next few years yeah these questions keep popping up, which either means people aren't understanding acceptance from where they are getting their information from, yeah. or they're struggling to actually apply it, or it's just that, or it's just that important that we constantly we revisit it. Yeah, I was expecting the acceptance question to come up at some point, but I wasn't expecting it from people that I knew and had met before. Uh, I would have expect. I was expecting that kind of question to come from someone that we've never met, someone that perhaps hadn't been part of an intervention program already. So, someone yeah. raw, just a lot of someone brand new to the game. You mean? Yeah, I was expecting raw. usual. You know, what do I do at a job interview? Yeah, yeah. What do I do when I'm struggling to ask for food in a restaurant? What do I do? You know, I was expecting yeah. these kind of questions, but. 
uh, to get the acceptance question and in the context that we got it in as well. You know? I, think, I, th I think that's what like um, through, well not through me, but caught me by surprise because I was expecting the acceptance uh, topic, the question, <laughs> but just the manner that it came in and the specific environment that it was brought up in, that's what um, kind of um, threw me as well. But it actually um, led on to some really good points about ad advertising mentality and, and, um, and um, finding your own authentic way of being advertised. Yeah. Find a way that you're happy as in find and find find a medium where you can advertise where you're happy with how you sound plus um, like demonstrating that you have a speech impediment because if you don't like it if you don't like how it sounds or don't want to apply it then you aren't going to follow those directions at all it, it, it will be kind of like you do it as a last resort thing, and by that point it's too late because it's a proactive approach yeah so taking on that program is a complete waste of everyone's time, really, because you're not going to implement it. Yeah, and even worse is when you repeatedly go back. What did Einstein say about Einstein insanity? said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Precisely, Chris, precisely. Were you a bit um, surprised that I was aware of what you were referring to there? Not surprised at all. I was, <laughs> I was expecting it to be a bit more snappier. <laughs> I think it is. I could sense Google being reached out uh, to. Uh, no hands, you know. Oh. No hands. <laughs> okay. Um, well, what I wanted to get in camera, uh, sorry, while I have in camera, I, I also wanted to say that, um, Chris, so for the next webinar, which will be next Saturday, same time. I want you to be the kind of leader, the facilitator. Yeah, no so, problem. Um, so I want, want you to kind of um, source participants and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, I've already got two that will definitely come. No problem. Watch me go, mate. Cool. So um, that's for your, your next challenge for uh, this week whether you like it or not no problem i'll take it on ruben yeah. delegating the tasks good you, you have the you, you have the added advantage of um seeing how today's went which was pretty much pretty much a pilot so you can kind of build on it see if you want to incorporate a structure um and kind of take it to the next stage <coughs> because a bit of progression is always good yeah, we'll take it up a notch next week. Personally for you, what did you gain out of the webinar this morning? Like, did you personally feel that, you know what, this is really good. I've gained something. I've learned something. What did you personally um, achieve this morning? The satisfaction that ooh, what we gave, the answers that we gave. Re like the response that we had was I've got a lot to think about and I need to decide exactly what action I'm going to take which is really nice to hear that our words are exactly it might not have been the answers they were expecting but they are the answers that were motivating them to make a change um, motivating them motivating them to take action now and that for me was the most important thing. Because anyone could come on any webinar, answer questions, and then, okay, brilliant, thanks for answering my question. And now that's it. And I'm just gonna carry on doing the normal thing, what I've been doing every day. But to hear that, okay, that's amazing. Now I've got a lot to think about, and I'm gonna decide what action I'm going to be taking. That That is the best reaction that you could get, really. And that's, exactly what the Q&A was set up to do. Fantastic. And um, I would urge kind of everyone to um, try, try to keep ATM free next Saturday. There's yes. AAM time. I guarantee you have no plans. 
I guarantee we got you there. Chris, you didn't ask the same question back to me or shall I just talk about what I gained? No, I want to know what, what did you get out of today? Um, today was cool because um, pretty, pretty much because that specific person came and it was a nice throwback to um, a few years ago. So it allowed me to actually reflect a bit. We caught up um, yesterday and we're talking about kind of, kind of like progress and how things were the last few years. And yeah, it kind of like reinforces my like, decisions in terms of like what kind of path I've taken with working on my speech because in the stuttering community there's so many different avenues or like ways you can go depending on who you meet which organizations you join and which groups you associate towards to towards to to um i'm pretty lucky because um to be honest like uh, when we met and everything we end up kind of forming shb um after kind of being part of a previous group and this was perfect because it allowed us to kind of shape it in our vision and it gave us a purpose. And looking back now, it actually reinforces that this was the right choice, it was the right decision. Um, I didn't have any regrets at all. And, um, and I'm very, very excited about kind of uh, the next few months and the years ahead because we have kind of our vision, our mission, and um, yeah, we're gonna, gonna make uh, big waves. I think we already have. Um, and we are kind of punching above our weight at the moment, which I'm sure you can agree on that one with. <laughs> but um, I think that's kind of one of the big strengths that we can kind of like function on that like bootstrap type mentality like down the basics even this podcast like um this is like proper like basic um like started from the ground up on the streets like, the first episodes were just me zooming up the first, first episode i think first one or two i was taking them in bed and just uh, <laughs> i'm being serious I'm chatting but then now i've you know, kind of stepped up a bit upgraded the setup we've got structures got paper notes and everything We've got vaseline as well um there's so right. much going on now like we're taking things to the next level to, to the next level learning every day and um that's the main thing that's what i've gained and this webinar was, was like another additional um like service so an additional tick on our kind of accomplishments yeah. during this past month because it's so easy to just switch off now and do the bare minimum don't get me wrong we've been on we've been streaming shows as well and and doing and doing all that stuff and kind of enjoying it but you can actually dangerously spend your entire day doing that during the, this quarantine period and you're missing a massive opportunity a massive op opportunity to um just work on maybe one specific skill and just practice it every day every every, every single day I, um I, i've been kind of kind of uh, upgrading my techers in the kitchen as well and and that's been fun man like um that's probably a good question to ask you as well apart from this podcast what has been your other achievement during lockdown if you have one chris if you have one is it I'm putting you on the spot? Yeah, I think that I wasn't usually the most patient person when it came to tech and computers, as you know. So for me, I committed to improving my skills in, you know, using a bit of Photoshop, a little bit of Canva, a little bit of video editing. And I feel like in order to push SHB and create the awareness of our organization that we want to, social media is obviously 
going to be a massive advertising space for us to use. And I wanted to contribute to the marketing. So I made the effort to enroll on a few online courses, get to know how these softwares work, and that's my achievement. Uh, I saw a post on Instagram at the beginning of the lockdown, and it said, if you don't come out of this with a new skill or a new side hustle started, then this whole lockdown has been a waste of time for you. And I thought, wow, that can't be me. I don't want to come out of this lockdown in exactly the same position as I am when the lockdown starts. Can so, I quickly ask you if that was a Gary Vee post? Because as, no, much, as, you, no, it actually as much as you like think, oh man, Gary Vee again. He, I like Gary Vee. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he is normally right or thinking on the right lines. Yeah. No, it wasn't it wasn't a Gary V post. It was it was on someone's story who had reposted it from somewhere. I don't know where they'd reposted it from, but it was a guy called Jay Hector who was a couple of years above me at school. But yeah, I saw it on his Instagram story and I was like, well, like Jay Hector. Yeah, that's I have to I have to do something to improve my skill set. So, you know, doing this kind of stuff, you and AO know how terrible I am. And when it comes to anything, design work or making You're hilarious, a man. Post, hilarious. you know, yeah. I always avoid and hide. <laughs> no, but dude, like so some of your posts that, that you made off your course, they were incredible. And then you even taught me something. Yeah, just like that. To yeah. So um it's they're magic of it and soon you'll be editing your own videos and uh, I can fly in you. I kinda wait to see your first masterpiece as well. Cause yeah. that's when like your patience gets tested. Yeah. When you're patient when you're editing videos. Cause you need to, you're essentially like um I've had one of one of the biggest projects I did was e editing about Four hours into five minutes. Four hours. Wow. Four hours into five minutes. And um, you, you really um, kind of, your patience is tested. You, you can either tap into any patience that you have already, that kind of skill or ability, or you learn to be patient. And if you if you want to do something like that, this is the best time to do it because it's the next excuse, man. The only problem is you need to get some videos to uh, to edit, and you can't even leave the house properly. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, I've got a few old videos that I can mess around with. But has there been anything else that surprised you during lockdown? Like, I'll give you an example, personal example. I have never washed a car in my life. And yesterday, I thought, you know what? I'm going to learn how to wash a car properly. And my dad was always into cars, loved cars. And he used to always, you know, say, oh, you're useless when it comes to cars. You know, you don't even wash your own car, blah, 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 blah. So I went on to YouTube and I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn how to properly wash a car. So I went on to YouTube and then I went outside and I was following the YouTube video step by step. And I washed three cars. So it's like this lockdown's making me a completely different person. Did three yeah. cars. How many cars do you have? Well, in what the household. It? In the household. Then... I, thought, I thought you went down the street and just started like... Nah, just having... yeah, knock, knocking on people's doors saying, do you want me to wash your car? In, in, um, there's these guys who hang, hang around the traffic lights. And... Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought that that's what you were going to do. No, man. Uh, we've, cool. got, we've got uh, two cars. So my mum has her car. Me and Charlie have our car. But then my dad had his car. So that's been sitting on the drive. And it's not been touched for six months. So Got it, got it, got it. So you washed everything. Now, yeah, so I managed to like that, which yeah. is another thing that I would never have done. I would have waited for someone else to sort it out. So again, I called up my mechanic friend and he took me through it and I was doing it, which 
I appreciate it's not the hardest thing in the world to jumpstart a car, but for me, someone that doesn't usually do things like this is like a massive step. So I've done that and then I cleaned it. You know, it needed a good clean. And now we've brought it back to life. So uh, I'm planning to keep it and make it my little project to soup it up a little bit. It's a nice car. It's a Mercedes SL. So it's a decent car. Very nice. Uh, very, very nice. Yeah, it needs work. Uh, it needs work, but I'm going to make it my little project. Okay. Um, CJ, my stomach is rumbling, which means we've come to that time in the day where we have to wrap it, um, up. Wrap it up and put an end to this episode of the podcast. Um, uh, just quick, quick, quick summary. So today was literally like a recap of so today's webinar. We honestly wish we could actually say more, but for a number of reasons, we can't purely because of confidentiality of participants and plus um but i'm still trying to process some of this so maybe down the line when we get a few of our other friends on we can speak a bit speak a bit more about it because i'm still trying to fully understand it in my own way of thinking as well because there's some important stuff there that can be applied when coaching people who stutter and and trying to hopefully take their speech and their life to the to the next level um yeah i've had a good day as well and tomorrow is going to be really really good because we're going to be podcasting a few hours after the toastmaster meeting so it'll be a good time to recap on that over yeah. to you chris yeah today's been a good day the q a reinforced to me even more why we set up shb it it, I clearly identify for me why we are unique in what we do, why we are different from other people. There was questions today like, I don't use technique and I don't know why I have to use it. You know, if that hasn't been explained to you, then instantly there's a problem. You know, so it just cemented for me what, what our role is in the starting community and I'm just really, it's made me more excited to push on for the next few months. Hopefully lockdown's over and everyone gets to do it safe and we can continue to crack on and really make a difference in the Star Wars community. Thanks, Chris. I think that that's a good way to cap off the episode. And um, as always, thank you very much for um, like turning up every day, man, without fail. We are the, we, we are the regulars, the untouchables, the... Um, just there, man. Just there. Just consistency. Consistency. What was it? What was that quote? Consistence beat re beats resistance, or is it yeah, persistence? Persistence. Persistence beats resistance. Because something. Consistency something. is the key to all success. Yeah, something like that. Something beats resistance, and uh, that's us. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna turn off all the feeds, and it's been a fantastic day. Halfway through Easter weekend. Chris, remember one piece of advice? <laughs> Do it one more time. Sorry, sorry. Done three, two, one. Remember, stop holding back.